I guess I'll start here. Like, there's obviously a lot of similarities with where we are right now compared to where the Aztecs were a year ago today. For you, where are their similarities, but where are their differences as San Diego State makes this run like they made a run a year ago? Well, certainly the similarities are the uh, the circumstances. I mean, you, you, you open with a 12 seed, you kind of scrape by. Um, you play a 13 seed because they upset a four seed. You blow them out. Um, you get the number one overall seed in the Sweet 16. Those are all identical to what happened last year. Certainly the teams are different, um, but I think this team is different too. I mean, it's not, it's not last year's team. Uh, it doesn't have the rim protection. We talked about that. Um, and it, it, you know, it maybe doesn't have the, the same swagger. I don't know. And maybe we're going to find out um, as last year's team. Um, but I think the biggest difference is that last year was all sort of new. And it was this, this just broad horizon and no one knew where it ended and it just kept going. Um, this year, they know what it looks like. And, and uh, for better or for worse, they, they kind of um, understand what's at stake. Uh, and have used it to their to their advantage, and so I think uh, just the kind of experience of having been through that, and played through all of it last year is what this team has that last team didn't. The last teams was maybe a little bit more talented. You know, we'll, we'll spend a lot of time here on UConn, but just real quick here, Mark, what they've accomplished the last couple of years here, going to back to back Sweet Sixteens, only fourth time in school history. Just how big of an accomplishment is this for the program? to be where they are now in the last couple of years, what they've been able to do? Well, I, you know, everyone's going to look at last year as the greatest season in, in school history. Um, but I think you could make an argument that what they've done this year is just getting to the Sweet 16, 16 is as impressive, if not more impressive. I mean, this team finished fifth in its conference. It struggled at times this year. It couldn't win close games, struggled on the road. Uh, it lost 10 times. Um, you know, it, it couldn't shoot. It was ranked in the 300s and three point, um, accuracy before last night. Um, and to get to a sweet 16 with this group is incredible. I mean, it's a testament to the coaches and also a testament to the players. Um, just kind of keeping focused, not kind of imploding when things went bad. I mean, they, they closed the season with two straight losses and then they lost it again in the, in the Mount West conference. A uh, tournament final against a team with Lane's fourth game in, in you know, like 70 hours. And and uh, they didn't let that bother them. They just kept their eye on the prize and, and kept going. Mark Ziegler joining us right now from Denver and route to Boston, where San Diego State will play the University of Connecticut at de facto home game for the Huskies on Thursday afternoon at 439 Pacific. You know, Mark, I, I feel as if most teams would be intimidated by UConn, top team in the field, but Again, there's the unique situation of the Aztecs, and a number of these players appeared in the national championship game, Lamont, Jaden, Micah, Darion, Tremel. W what do you think the mentality of this team will be heading into a game like this? You know, I mean, it's funny you mentioned that. I'm just writing something about that. You know, a lot of teams would be really intimidated having to go play UConn, as good as they are, uh, in Boston, you know, on kind of a quick turnaround, cross-country trip. Um, and it's going to be a home game for, for UConn. Um, and these guys are not. I mean, there's many things, uh, you know, that, that these guys might not have when it comes to the game in terms of uh, size or talent, athletics, or whatever it is. But one thing is they are not going to be scared. And they are embracing this. I mean, I, you, I went in the locker room last night and talked to a couple guys, and they're just like, bring it on, you know. We're not afraid of them. I and mean, we played them in, in, a, in a dome football stadium in front of you know millions and millions of people on TV and 72,000 in the stadium. And we were down five with five to go. Um, they, you know, these guys, they know what March is all about. They understand how to get there, what needs to be done. And they're looking at this going, yeah, it's going to be a tough uh, game, but Hey, it's not an altitude. <laughs> you know, we've yeah. been in a pit at altitude. That's a lot harder than this. Uh, and they're going to get an extra, a couple of days to, to, to scout and prepare for UConn, remember when they played them last year, they had one day, quick turnaround. And the problem with UConn is they run a lot of complex sets, more than maybe anybody in the country. And it's hard to sort of assimilate that, absorb all that in a single day walkthrough, basically. And they're going to have three days now, a lot of film sessions, two hard practices. Um, so they're hoping maybe that will make a difference. Pretty good uh, couple games for somebody that didn't win the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year in Jane Ledee, right? Hmm. 
<laughs> you know, it's funny. He's not a big talker and he's not going to, he's not going to lash out, but he kind of let it slip a little bit when we asked him when he was third team all American. And instead of saying, Oh, this is great. I'm, I'm it's my dream to be an all American and just saying I'm an all American. He said, yeah, I was hoping it'd be a little bit higher. That's all he said. Didn't mm-hmm. say anything more, but you could just tell the way he came out in these last two games. He feels like he's got something to prove and, and he, and he's proven it. Yeah. I mean, 32 and 26 points, the three pointers, you know, the beast inside filing out other, other entire other teams, front lines. Uh, he's a one man wrecking crew. And so I think there's a little quiet motivation there. Mark, if you followed this story, I know you've been so busy writing about San Diego state and traveling today, but Dan Hurley is playing this us against the world. We've been slighted card where he said, uh, yesterday, I think to Matt Norlander of CBS, oh, we're the early game in Boston. Oh, we had FAU and Northwestern in our bracket. Oh, we have San Diego State and Auburn. We know what it is. I'm paraphrasing, but we know what it is. We know what the NCAA wants. H- have you followed this trend line? And this is not a narrative that exists outside of Dan Hurley's mind, right? That it's yeah, it, everyone's I mean, out to get UConn. I don't see it like that. <laughs> Look, Dan Hurley is a really, really good coach. Yeah. He's really good tactically. Like I said, they run the most complex intricate sets of anyone in the country and they run a more precise than anyone in the country and he's a really good motivator yeah he is a master motivator his 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 practices i know people who have worked for him and have talked about how insane his practices are uh and how he plays mind games and mind tricks and and he's just a master at it this is just the latest one if i was in his shoes i'd do the same thing because you don't want to come into this game saying well we're the favorites we're playing at home we're the number one overall seed. We have all these NBA players. We're a 10 point, you know, favorite. And, you know, oh, there's this little old San Diego State. I mean, all the, that puts all the pressure on him by, by, by kind of flipping the script a little bit and saying, eh, they're trying to screw us. It, it, in the mind of his players, it turns them into the underdog. And that's what you want. You want the underdog mentality. Cause I'm sure, I'm sure he watched that game last night. He watched the tape of the Yale game and he's scared. Um, you know, if you see San Diego State and you know that these guys aren't going to be afraid of you, you know that you felt them last year in the last few minutes of the national championship game, uh, and you see them shoot like that, you're getting a little bit worried. So you've got to try everything you can in the book to to try to get your team to take this game seriously, and that's what he's doing. You, you know, usually in college sports, to have matches with a lot of the same players on both teams a following year just because of the turnover and the transfer portal and, and whatnot. But with these two teams, there's a lot of players on both sides that were in the national title last year. Do you think that San Diego State can take anything away from what they saw last year in the national title game and, and help them with, with their Thursday game versus UConn? I think the biggest thing they'll take away is, is just the idea of how they run their offense. Um, you know, and, and I mean, look, to give you an example, they'll, they'll be, you know, 10, 12 seconds left on the shot clock. And usually teams in that situation will back it out, have the guard pull out, get guys in the corner and bring up the big, set a ball screen and let them play out the ball screen. And that's it. Usually there's no passes. I mean, if there's a pass, it's to the big, roll into the basket. That's it. They will, if, if their first couple actions don't work and there's 10 or 12 seconds of the shot clock, they'll call another set and they'll run it all the way through over and over and over. Pass, 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 cut, 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 screen, screen, screen. Uh, and sometimes to the point where they'll take a shot clock violation, but they're not going to just jack up some crazy shot. They're going to have everything has a purpose. And so that's really hard to play against. Again, like on a one day prep, it's almost impossible. And so I think having been through it, those players having played against them and understanding that have a better idea of how to deal with that and, and, and have sort of the mental fortitude late in the shot clock to know they're going to keep running their plays. It's not just going to be hero ball and dribble some guy shooting it. So I think that's going to, be the biggest takeaway and also just the confidence that they were close you know they were they were a uh, justin hawkins three-pointer away from really making that game interesting and i give give uconn credit i mean they got to five and and that arena for those of us who were there you could feel the anxiety and tension in the arena and they calmly ran a, a real complex set with double screens the mop butler was on him they knew it was coming and he was right on top of him he rose up and hit a three-pointer he's an nba player and that's why and and uh that was the difference I love your point, though, because you look at tempo and people think San Diego State plays at a slow tempo and they don't play at a quick tempo. UConn plays at a slower tempo than San Diego State. They will use that shot clock to their advantage. A lot like Houston, by the way, one of the slowest teams in America as well. Mark, um, always appreciate it. Safe travels out there. I will see you out there, I'm sure, on Wednesday um, when San Diego State begins practicing from Boston. And I appreciate you hopping on. Thanks, Mark.
All right. We'll talk to you guys. All right. Great stuff. Mark Ziegler covers the Aztecs for the Union Tribune.